you're very good at networking through that gold shim. I know he talks to Arnold. He talks to, to, yeah. to RFK Jr. You you fucked up with everyone at that gym. Yeah, Arnold's super <laughs> nice. I mean, he seen he seen me in 2020 the first time. I just yeah. won the uh, muscle contest, so I was in shape. Right. Um, and I worked out outside. I had my shirt off, and he came up to me and was like, "Oh, you look shredded. Let's do some shots. Show me a front double face." Do you speak to him in German or what, what do you speak no, to him in what language? In English. He showed yeah. me a front double bicep. And then then uh he knew I was Austrian. And oh, he then knew, when, oh, he knew. Okay, he knew. When, when he walked away, he said, fantastic. <laughs> so fantastic. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Guru Talk. I'm Dave Palumbo. Joining me today is going to be Leo Meyerhofer. We had him on After Hours, uh, I think, two weeks ago. We were talking a little bit about RF Kennedy's training program uh, that he kind of helped him out with a little bit. And uh, Leo and I were talking, and we said, hey, we're going to do a show on how to live a long time, or at least how to live a long time and actually be healthy. So welcome to the show, Leo. What's up, Dave? Nice to, to be on again. Yeah, welcome back to the show. And, uh, you know, you, you had a lot of knowledge uh, we were talking about on After Hours. And I said, you know what? We need to do a separate show where we just talk, you and I, and we talk about how to live a long time. Because you know what? As I'm getting older now, I'm 55 years old, uh, living long, at least living a good quality of long life is very important to me. So, Maybe some of the things when I was in my 20s and 30s I really didn't care about. Now I'm starting to say, hey, maybe I got to like uh, address this and address that. And obviously blood pressure and blood sugar control, all these things that I might have taken for granted when I was a little younger now is becoming more important to me because I know that um, if these values are off, it's going to shorten my lifespan or it's going to at least shorten the quality of my lifespan. And I think that's a huge, huge thing. They you're really into longevity too. You're into a lot of like um, uh, supplementation to help you extend your life and obviously live a healthier life. Give me your whole philosophy on longevity and longevity supplements. So um, basically longevity is we're trying to, to fight um, the loss of information. So um, the cells, like by DNA, they have information what they're supposed to do. And uh, through many processes, um, we have to fight the loss of that information. And we have to, you know, have a good regeneration of these cells. Um, and basically aging is the loss of that information and a decline of processes like DNA repair and cell division and mitochondrial function. Um, so that's what we, we try to counteract. And there's a few pathways to do so. Um, one of them is like, it's called hormesis, which is the good kind of stress you want to, uh, yeah, put your body into. And um, everyone who listens to your, you know, Ask Dave's and such, they will have heard about, for example, AMPK and... Um, there's a lot of things you can turn on in order then to turn on so-called like longevity genes that are in us. And those are like seven, there's seven of them. They're called sirtuin genes. So cert stands for silent information regulator. So keep the, the DNA information and the identity of the cell because aging is kind of also a loss of information for that cell to know what it's supposed to do. So um, by having a decline in those processes, um, the cell 
will, you know, uh, the DNA will unwrap from the histone, the protein, which is, it's around. And then there's more information given to that cell, what it's supposed to do than what it actually was set out to do. And that's like, it's called X differentiation. And that's basically how we age. And we want to try to not have that happen to us. For example, smoking is horrible. And, but also, as I said, AM, AMPK, turning on AMPK is good. So what, ex explain to our audience what AMK is and, um, and, and what turning it on means, because I think a lot of people don't even understand that. It's kind of, um, it's a kind of signalizing the body that it's in a deficient state. Um, for example, by uh, doing endurance activities or having low blood sugar. And the low blood sugar will then, um, like, there's a correlation between your IGF levels and turning on the sirtuin genes, the longevity genes. And a lower IGF will turn them on. So that's why we try to keep that low. Um, but for me, it's important to keep a healthy, healthy balance. Because what also happens is that the loss of muscle mass oftentimes for older people is actually the cause of death. Like they fall and they die from it. They get so weak that they die from that. So try to balance that out. And you can do that and you can turn on AMPK through like a lot of different things. Um, stuff like berberine or metformin or fasting or um, just endurance or weight training. There, there's a lot of things that can turn that on. And uh, yeah, so basically it's trying to turn these sirtuin genes on. And there's also supplements that would help turn that on. For example, like the probably the best supplement out there is called NMN. That's a precursor of NAD. And right. NAD is basically our uh, life, what do you call it? Liquor of life. <laughs> and, and so, and it's like, for all kinds of processes and also especially for being energized and by, you know, as, as we age, usually NMN declines. And so like all my clients, the older they are, the greater the difference it makes when they start taking NMN. So NMN is a precursor to NAD and okay. NAD, NAD. And I think it's important. It's, I think it's important to mention that the, um, that it, it's a precursor and it's more orally absorbable. You yeah, I, I believe you can't take NAD plus. Exactly. Orally, exactly. Right. Cause I, I, I actually take an injectable form of NAD plus from Titan medical center. They, they have it in little bottles. I inject it intramuscularly a couple times a week just to raise my NAD levels. And, and by me raising my NAD levels, explain what that does. Yeah. It, it makes you way more energized and it also helps turn on sirtuin genes um, it's like good for cellular energy production, for mitochondrial function, for DNA repair, um, for like even oxidative stress reduction, uh, even neural protection, um, and also cardiovascular health. It's like, I mean, there's no, no reason not to want to have that high. And NMN, so there's a bunch of precursors. There's also NR. But NMN seems to be the best. I think it's because of the size of the molecule. So it gets absorbed the best. The studies confirm that NMN is raising NAD levels the best if you compare like amongst all oral forms. Mm -hmm. And obviously everyone's going to take NAD plus injections all the time. Yeah. I mean, they, they will definitely do the job. I, but I'll tell you one I, thing. I take the NAD plus injection. I get a, a little nauseous from it, a little tiny bit, just when I initially do it for the first five or 10 minutes. And then it kind of goes away. And um, I, I, I definitely, I feel more mentally astute when I take NAD plus. I'll tell you that. It's, it, it's not like a stimulant, but I just feel like I'm sharper. I don't know if, it, it is, if it's a placebo effect or if I'm just imagining it. No, but, no. It, it's also, so it also determines your circadian rhythm. So that's why you should always take it right, like in the morning. And it's great when you travel, then whenever it's morning time, you start timing your NMN and you'll get into the rhythm pretty fast. And um, it's pathetic yeah. that at my age, I have to take uh, NAD plus in the morning and I have to take melatonin before bed. 
that's because my circadian rhythms are not working well anymore. You know, and that and that's that's one of the things that is comes with aging. When you age, you don't produce as much melatonin from your pineal gland of your brain because that kind of shrivels up a little bit. And I've noticed over the years, I always took like three milligrams. I have like um, a product called Somalize. I put three milligrams of melatonin in it and it works really well. People love it. And then as you get older, sometimes you, you need to actually take a little bit more. I take five milligrams now. I take a little, I, I double, I do take a dose and a half of my Somalize product before bed to get up to about five milligrams. And uh, I find that works even better now. But when I was younger, if I took too much melatonin, it almost made me groggy a little bit. Like I didn't need as much. So I definitely noticed that I'm, my body's not producing as much melatonin as I'm getting a little older. Do you take NAD every day? No, I think you live two or three days a week. You know, I'll just, inject. I mean, I can take it every day. I mean, Titan Medical provides it to me and, and I, and I like it, but um, I usually take glutathione every single day. And I'm sure we're going to talk about that in a little bit too. Oh yeah. With glutathione, I would actually rather take NAC because, uh, yeah. because why? like you can have, when you, when you ingest glutathione directly, yeah, you don't know if it's the right amount that you actually need and too much glutathione can actually also be rather bad for you because like yeah. you always want to have so like there's this there's this myth that antioxidants whatsoever like you know take them all like you right. can't overdose but can you kind of can and if you take the precursor your body will convert as much as it needs so you could t right. take too much and like a little bit of that would be like you wouldn't even need it because you don't know your rate of conversion or what your body needs. Right. But you overdose that way. So I always, but I always worry that you know what this is. This is I'll tell you why this is my thinking process. I always worry that I'm not gonna that for some reason the conversion process is not high enough in my body. In other words, you could take a ton of NAC if you don't convert it to, to glutathione, then then you're screwed basically. So I do a little NAC via my this product i sell called the uh, liver stable so it's good for your liver and then mm -hmm. i also inject 200 milligrams of glutathione is not a lot injection wise i know people that take 600 milligrams so i rather take i take smaller amounts every day rather than taking like a big injection once a week or every or every or twice a week i think it works better that way i, I don't know what your feeling is on that but i i just i found that less more frequently worked better for me than more less frequently does that make sense yeah always with everything i would more frequently is always better yeah. um but do you do you take 200 every day almost every day yeah yeah i mean that that's a good amount like <laughs> yeah I, was, I don't know i i feel good on it i don't get sick when i take it you know so yeah uh, now it's better than not taking it i think but, i have a lot of oxidative distress I, in my, I, my body i think i need i need it <laughs> I would rather. I, no, I really think as we get older, you you need more of these things. Like I think if the twenty year old kid took glutathione every day, Please. it probably wouldn't do anything. It probably doesn't even need it. You know, they probably they probably produce so much glutathione naturally in their body that it doesn't. It, it's, you're not going to notice a difference. But I think as you get older, your ability to produce these you know certain of these hormones and uh, excuse me nutritional I don't even know what you want to call it, enzymes uh, or, or supplements uh just decreases i just feel like you just you're just not we're not capable of doing it anymore like nad levels i'm sure when you're 20 you probably have so much nad you don't know what to do with it you know and then you hit 50 and all of a sudden you can't produce anymore and that's i think that's what isn't that really what we're doing we're theoretically the the, the idea of aging is because we're not producing the molecules that keep us young anymore right yes but we can work against that and it's not all inevitable uh, Eighty percent is um, through your epigenome, so that's basically your control center. Like that's you know turning on and off genes, and yeah. twenty percent is genetic. So you you can't like there's ninety year olds that have have like testosterone right. like it's five year old, but right. most you know I think the tendency is going downwards because the efforts are also going down. Like compare what what ninety year olds do to what 20 year olds do you know like right. most of 20 year olds will just and when you're but the good thing about being young is you can get away with stuff right. that, that's that's but exactly if you keep really the it like like good regimen and you stay like really consistent with your lifestyle and your sleep yeah. and work 
out. I mean, the best anti-aging thing you can do on in the planet is exercising because that will also like elevate your NAD. So exercise you know, is not like you can't beat it. It's unfortunate for everyone who wants to make money, but. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you another good example too. I, I went to Italy in a number of years ago with, um, it was bodybuilding related. But when I got there, the, the people who flew us in and, and put us up, Yamamoto Nutrition, they um, took us out to like a, like a real home cook Italian dinner. It was, it was a restaurant, but they were, they, everything was homemade, including the wine. You know, and, and there was a lot of cheeses in the food, and I'm very lactose intolerant normally. But they're like, listen, trust us, eat the food. I ate everything. All the foods I normally wouldn't eat, a lot of lactose, you know, or a lot of milk products that normally would destroy. Not my, I didn't have one stomach upset problem. I, th I did this for three days. I was there, whatever it was. I was eating all their food, and I felt like energized by the food because everything is, is homegrown. Nothing's processed. Yeah. And I think the, our food supply sucks here. I think, we've, I think we're really poisoning ourselves with, with most of the foods that we eat in this country. Oh, 100%. And, you know, um, real cheese, like actually real cheese, how you make it, has yeah. no lactose. It's lactose. Now, oh, yeah, it's all fermented out probably, right? But, yeah. but here, I mean, there's so much other stuff in the cheese that's not cheese. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like 50% cheese and 50% like kind of. Dairy, mix, mix, mash, whatever. Yeah. I, I believe me, I believe it. It was, it was a, it was an eye opener. It was an eye opener that I couldn't believe it. You know, even the pizza. I had a fresh pizza, made pizza there with all homemade cheese and sauce. It was like I didn't have indigestion. I nothing. My body just like loved it. It was just, it was like unbelievable how you know different it is. But Italy is known for having you know really good food supply there. You know, they don't really have a lot of junk there because everyone makes their own stuff from scratch there. I mean, that's that's what the Italians are those known for. Although you can still get McDonald's there if you really want to, you know. <laughs> but the food regulations overall in Europe are so much better. If you just look okay. at the food labels, what has 20 ingredients here has five ingredients there. Yeah. It gets bad after five days. And here you put it on the shelf and it will never It'll never get back. Like, I, doesn't it? I found a McDonald's. My my kids are slobs. And so, you know, my <laughs> we'll stop and we'll get my kids McDonald's, you know, because kids like McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. I found a thing of French fries that my son must have shoved behind the seat <laughs> like three months earlier. The French fries look like you could have eaten them. They look, they were identical. They didn't even have, there was, a, yeah. there was no mold on them. There was nothing. They looked perfect. Nothing had decomposed whatsoever in three months. They were petrified. They were hard, but they were they were like perfectly preserved. Which and, and, and we're putting that into our body, you know. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. All right. So let's get back to the living a long time. All right. So you, so there are cert two in genes. The first exposure I ever had, by the way, to cert genes, just for you guys, for comical relief, is when I used to go out to dinner with uh, Steve Blackman when I worked for Muscular Development mag Magazine back in. From 06 to 09, I used to do their website. Black, that was when cert genes first came out. And Blackman was huge with the red wine and, and resveratrol. Red, ah, resveratrol, uh, cert genes, stimulate cert genes, yeah. live a long time. And that's where the, the whole a glass of red wine will help you live longer thing came from because of the cert uh, gene stimulation or the cert receptors stimulation from the, the resveratrol in the red wine, essentially, right? And then they, they took that and they started, now they sell resveratrol and you can buy all these ingredients you know, separately, but that's yeah. where all that came from. There, that's like a kind of a myth because it hasn't been proven in studies that the amount of resveratrol in red wine is like, it's not even close to be enough. Of course not. Of and course. then the news that like, there's this guy, I admire him and he's a real guru. I'm nowhere near, you know, uh -huh. like David Sinclair and he's big on resveratrol. He takes like a thousand milligrams a day, which is like nuts. Right. And when you take it with oleic acid, it like gets absorbed way better, by the way. Oleic but, acid? Is that what you said? Oleic yeah, acid? Acid. From okay. but when the thing is there's new research and Sinclair doesn't want to uh comment on it because it kind of says taking resveratrol blunts the effects of exercise. So <laughs> it seems resveratrol is not that good after all. Like there's just one study that he did on mice 
that had a good effect, but everything after that, everything after 2006 is basically not really showing that it does anything and especially not in humans. So I'm, I'm like, I don't, and I work together with um, uh, um, Ian from Wizard Sciences and uh, he makes a like a product with NMN, uh, mm -hmm. one's called Olympic RX and Neural RX for, you know, focus and muscle fiber recruition. Um, but he also like we talked about it and we're like we should uh, like, take out the resveratrol and put something else in there. I think uh, Ginseng or something he researched and said that would wow. uh, also like uh, uh, multiply the effect. So we always look for things to, you know, multiply the effect of other things. You know so, what though? One of the just, facts is I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm, I'm just going to stop. So Blackman said this too. I got to give him credit for this. He always said the things that make you live the longest are not necessarily good for bodybuilding. And the things that are good for bodybuilding oh, yeah. usually reduce the, 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 the amount of time you're going to live because inflammation is good. Acute inflammation is good for bodybuilding because it's, it's a signal for your body to repair itself. Inflammation for lo longevity is not good. You want to reduce inflammation. So it's like these two forces battling, which obviously the, the true answer is somewhere in the middle. You know, you got to have balance. You can't just go... Ant complete anti-inflammation and you can't go too much inflammation you yeah. have to find the middle ground to get the best and benefit there's there's also new research that says that leucine helps turning on sirtuins but then if you take too much leucine it would turn on mtor which would do the opposite job so right. so but you want to turn on want... mtor to, 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 to grow muscle so i mean you know that that's very important to bodybuilders obviously so then you would like if I would have someone on the perfect anti-aging protocol, right. I would say we elevate mTOR one time a day, and therefore we use a lot of leucine and get the sirtuin uh, elevation too, like once a day through that pathway. And that's like directly after the workout. And we feed ourselves after the workout. And if we do like intermittent fasting in order to turn on AMPK and hormesis, yeah. then we that when we're fat after the workout for a long period of time or something like that. So like you can't find, you know, you need a balance with everything, but, and you know, bodybuilding is pretty much out of balance. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, the times that we are on a high caloric restriction, they do help. So if you're like a Greg Doucette guy, who's like main gaining yeah. then and, and you can really do it. And then you go on a diet, you know, that, might work because it's not too much of an extreme like you stuffed yourself right so <laughs> you were maybe oh, not yeah well because you know it, it, fasting is not fasting is not good if you're trying to put muscle on okay so no. if you're trying to be the best bodybuilder you can be you can't really be wor too worried about you know like trying to fast and do a lot of these anti-aging things here's my take on the whole thing i think the anti-aging protocols out there will help you live a longer life but the bodybuilding lifestyle will help you live a better quality of life. So I don't necessarily need to live to 120. Um, I'll take 100, but I don't want to. I want to live to 100 and be functional. In other words, I want to be able to ambulate myself. I don't want to be, you know, in a wheelchair. I, I want to be strong. I want to have muscle, you know, where I can actually do things myself. And I want to be cognizant, where I have like my my brain working. So. I don't need to be the guy who said, he, oh, Dave Palumbo set the uh, the aging record. He lived to 150, but he fucking was out of his fucking, he didn't know what was going on and he couldn't move for the last 40 years of his life. That's, I don't want that. I'd rather live a shorter life, but be functional. Now, I don't want to die at, at you know, at, at 60 years old either. I want to live to, you know, as, as, as old as I can, but I want to be functional. So I think that you have to find a balance. So like, I carry zero body fat on my body. Okay. So if I fast for too long every day, I, I, it's like my body eats itself up. I can't do it. So for me, fasting would not be one of the protocols that I would employ to try to live longer. Whereas someone who's a, like a fatty, someone who, you know, who, who tends to hold fat more often and, and, and has trouble losing weight. And, and that might actually jeopardize their, their livelihood because they might die younger because they're going to have heart disease or they're going to have poor blood sugar control. Those people might benefit from fasting, you know, because they don't lose muscle anyway. And so I think you have to kind of cater the anti-aging cocktail or, 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 or formula according to the person. And just like you do with bodybuilding with, with, you know, not everyone needs to train 
a hundred sets a day. You know, some people need to do low volume. Some people do better with high volume. Some people do better with heavy weight. Some people do better with lightweight and more pump sets. Everyone's body responds different. You got to kind of find what your genetics are and then, and then cater the program to that specific uh, genetic makeup. Don't you think? Yeah. But the fasting is not about the caloric intake. So there's research where both groups like took in the same amounts of calories or like maintenance level, but the group that did intermittent fasting had way more elevation in uh, in sirtuin and and like longevity, you know, output. So, um, but obviously, like everyone's individual, and you got to see like yeah, what you need right. On. But you know that you can't store protein in your body. So, in other words, if you eat two hundred, let's say you need two hundred grams of protein a day, okay, for whatever you, for your purposes. If you if I spread it out over the course of you know the 16 hours I'm awake during the day, I'm going to do much better than if I just eat it, you know, in an eight hour window, because on the other eight hours that I'm not eating protein on my body's cannibalizing itself because I have no reserves. Whereas some people, their bodies, they have a slow metabolism. It just, should, you know, they, if they don't eat for those, those, those eight hours that they're awake and they're fasting and they're only eight, eating in an eight hour window, their bodies just shut their metabolism down and they don't lose anything, you know, and women are like that. Women can preserve muscle much more easier than men. And so there is a difference body composition wise in people who have very, very fast metabolisms ver with no reserves versus the person who's got a lot of reserves and, 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 you know, has a slow metabolism. That's true. But obviously if your calorie intake is high, you can't store protein, but you can store, glycogen so therefore your body will get the energy from the glycogen first so if you eat enough you still should be fine and also we're talking about longevity not the best physique if we're talking right. about the best well, we're trying to blend we're trying to blend it for our audience because yeah. we know our audience wants to look good yeah. in addition to, to living a long time so we have to find that this has got to be a can't be all or none it can't be either you live a long time or you or, or you look good there's no in between there's got to be a way to, to to integrate the two i think I can tell you what I do. So, yeah, let um, me hear. I don't, I don't eat any carbs, and I work out in the morning, and I don't eat okay. any carbs till right after I train. So when I come at like eleven in the morning, my breakfast would be like just, you know, the whole eggs and egg whites and some, some ham or something, some turkey. So like my blood, I keep my blood sugar low for like fourteen hours of twenty-four. I have no carbs, but have enough protein and fats and everything to fuel from and i feel great and then the rest of 10 hours of the day I, I can have carbs so that way i'm not fasting but i keep my blood sugar low and i take for example before bed i take a little bur berberine like pretty much but um i wouldn't take it like after my workout because i'm worried about m tour and apk you know i want to have muscle so you know that's so like, let me ask you what, this question. What, what's the theory? What, why, what, what's going on when you're on no carbs in the beginning of the day versus later in the day? What, what do you think is going on in your body when you're doing that? Oh, that it does, I don't think it really matters when to fast unless it's like, you well, but you're not fasting. You're, you are eating the whole day. You're just not eating carbs in the morning. So yeah. that's not really a fast, is it? No, no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's just what I do. Like I try to keep my blood sugar low, but I'm, I'm not willing to fast because I want to keep muscle. And right. you know, I keep my my, uh, my insulin sensitivity high that way, and I keep my IGF low, and that's good good for longevity. And when I want my IGF higher, like optimally, like after the workout, for example, then I eat some carbs. You have, well, you why like, do you think? Hold on. Why do you think your IGF is staying low? You're still on protein. Protein kind of stimulates. Actually, in a low carb environment, you would get more growth hormone release in your body because. You know, insulin levels will be lower, GH levels are higher, GH causes IGF-1 release. So wouldn't you think when you're eating low carb early in the day, your IGF-1 levels would be higher? You mean then then after from eating carbs? Yeah, then from because when you're eating carbs, you're raising your insulin levels, obviously, because you gotta you gotta release insulin to absorb the carbs. When insulin levels are high in the body, GH levels tend to be lower in the body, naturally, of course. We're not talking about exogenous. That's a good question. I, I don't, I don't, know, and I'm, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do it more for the insulin sensitivity overall. Okay, all right. Yeah. First of all, you're young. How old are you now? 
I'm 31. Yeah, you, you don't have to worry yeah. about it. You got another 10, 15 years before you have to start worrying about longevity. But yeah. No, no, you can't you can't start early enough. I'm 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 lucky that you know <laughs> I'm hitting myself early. Yeah. Like before I look old. Yeah. But if I if I already look old, I mean you can reverse it a bit, like your bio age. Yeah. You can actually measure that and see like how old is your body from the inside. Right. Like right. by the way, most of the people and the AIs can tell from the way you look how, how old you are from the inside too. So it's what what you look like is kind of a representation too. Not not maybe how healthy you are, right. but how how old like you are. But you can reverse it a lot. Like the worse you've done, the easier to reverse it. Uh, but there's I, there's really well, I'm good sure I did a lot of damage. Hopefully I reverse most of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean you're taking the NAD, that's great. You're working out, that's yeah. great. I think and you do not like eating crazy, right? I mean, yeah, I don't, do I don't need a, I don't need an exorbitant amount of food. Yeah, I eat much less food than I normally uh, do. I I've, recently I've increased my food intake a little bit, but I went through a period where, like, right after I stopped bodybuilding and I and I went off like I even went off HRT because I was trying to get my wife pregnant. I went through this thing where I was on very I was on low protein actually, and I was on lower calories, and I wasn't eating that much because I was trying to lose muscle, which is not as you know if you're working out it's hard to lose muscle, but if you eat less food. You know, your body kind of eats itself up a little bit. So I, I decreased my size a little bit, and that took a long time. And I wanted all my my blood markers to be back to normal. And so I got everything down to normal pretty much, which all my kidney function, liver function, everything was was complete is completely normal now. And uh, so I had gotten a little too light almost because when I had my uh, cardiac surgery, I couldn't train, and I, I I went down to as low as 182 pounds, which is the lightest I had been since high school. So. Uh, I wanted to put the I wanted to put some muscle back on because that's that's a little too light for me at, at five foot you know ten. So I gained back about twenty pounds since that surgery. So I'm about two oh two oh two now, and that's a good weight for me because I have muscle on my body again and and I feel strong. But yet, you know, I'm still but I, and I'm eating more frequently. But I'm still I, I don't eat a fraction of what I of what I normally used to eat when I was bodybuilding. And to be honest with you, I eat when I'm hungry now. Whereas in the in the past, I would just eat because I knew I had to eat. Because if I didn't eat, I would just lose weight. And I, I think my your body kind of tells you when you really need food if you know how to read it properly. Some people emotionally eat, but I, I know when my body needs food. Like I, I I just it's like it sends out like an alarm to me. Eat, feed me, you know, feed me protein, feed me protein. So I'd probably eat four maybe five small protein meals a day. And I probably, maybe my dinner is a little bigger than normally, but I eat a lot of vegetables with dinner too. So I, I, I don't eat huge carb meals. Um, I just don't handle carb. If I eat a lot of carb, it's not that I don't get, I don't gain weight from them, but I just don't, I like my blood sugars will go a little higher than I, that I'm comfortable with. So I try to keep carbs moderate, you know, um, I don't go crazy with the carbs. Do you do a lot of cardio or what you doing for that? I, I, I don't need to do any cardio and I have zero. I, matter of fact, I have set, my body fat is so low yeah. that they can't, when they give me shots, like when I was in the hospital, they, they, they couldn't give me subcutaneous shots. I'm like, look, you got to put it under the skin. There's no, I don't have any fat to inject into this. There is zero on my body. I don't know if I have some, something wrong with me. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't make fat cells anymore. And so uh, I, it doesn't matter what I eat, you know, I can't gain, I can't get fat. So I, uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, so I have to make sure I have enough muscle mass on my body. Otherwise I get, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to like, you know, weaken my immune system. Cause you know what happens if you're immune, if you're not eating enough protein, your immune system will cannibalize your, your lean muscle tissue and turn and grab those amino acids for the yeah. immune system. So if you want to be, have a good immune system, you have to eat enough protein. And so my protein requirement is probably pretty high in my body because, you know, if you work out, you break down muscle and then all the other requirements, hair, nails, skin, the internal lining of your colon and, and, and intestinal tract, it all requires protein on a daily basis. And then your immune system needs a lot of protein, especially if you get sick. So I think people don't realize how much protein you really need, even if you're not even working out. And so even when I was not able to train, when I was recovering from my surgery, I, I still kept my protein intake pretty high, you know? And for me, high now is like, if I'm eating like 180 grams, 200 grams a day, that's a lot, you know? Whereas in the past I would eat like, you know, five, 600 grams of protein a day. 
But there's there's more benefits to cardio than just being shredded. I mean, yeah, but I do do cardio. But I'll, all right. So getting back to your original question, I do do cardio now, but I don't do it at high, I don't do high intensity cardio. But I do cardio for my lungs and breathing because I had had some pneumonia yeah. issues after I had my heart surgery, and they wanted me doing cardio, and I, I I'm I'm all or none. I can't you know so. I've been doing like probably five days a week of cardio and um, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm doing enough. I don't, it doesn't even, you know what the problem is? It doesn't raise my heart rate that high because I just was about to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not getting, cause you know what? I'm in good shape. So when you're in good shape, it's hard to raise your heart rate up high enough. And so I don't even know if it's necessary, I think uh, to raise your heart rate. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm not sold on the whole cardio thing. I, I really believe that weight training is more important for older people over the age of like 50, because I think that's, and you mentioned this earlier, muscle wasting and, and loss of muscle, lean muscle tissue is very prevalent as we get older. And that's a lot of times what leads to people dying because they have no lean tissue. They, they fall, they injure themselves, and then their body just goes into this downward spiral and they die. So I think, I think it's important to maintain lean muscle tissue more so as you get older. Um, what's your take on it? If you ask me either or, I would say rather go you know lift weights yeah uh, definitely for your bone density for for like just having yeah. muscle being yeah. a 100 and you can even you can lift weights and it's going to be a cardio session if you do yeah. superset for example you superset yeah. everything your heart rate will go up tremendously that's true, that's true. Do like compound movements or like you do like or leg leg movements for 20 reps i mean if you take little breaks that's cardio like yeah, cardio right. is not, you know, you don't have to run to do cardio. Right, 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 right. You can also, you know, do jump ropes. You don't even move or you do like circuit workouts or something like that. That's totally cardio. Cardio right. is just about your heart. Like how's your heart working and it's engaging and, and, and you know, uh, uh, being trained. So you can train your heart in multiple ways. There's not I mean, any treadmill yeah. to train your heart. <laughs> No, you make a good point because, you know, like if I do a leg workout, I'm sure you also experience this. If you're, if you're squatting and leg pressing and you're going to, you're raising your heart rate up. You, I mean, that's, oh, that's yeah. cardiovascular work right there. I mean, you're doing brief interval type stuff, It's but it's almost like sp doing sprints. I mean, you're doing an all out set and then you're resting for 30, 60 seconds and you're doing it again. I mean, so, I mean, you, you definitely wind yourself doing a If you do deadlifts or you do bent rows, anything that requires a lot of stabilization of the whole body while you're doing the exercise that that's your, your heart is pumping. I'm breathing heavy when I'm doing those yeah. sets. So, um, that, that gets you in shape more than you think. You know, people don't realize it. You really do get in shape more than you think from that type of, uh, that type of weight training. And so you're right. You don't have to do conventional cardio. And that's why I think you're right. Also that weight training is way more important than, than cardio. If, if you have to pick one or the other, if you can yeah. do both, do both, you know? Yeah, I'm going to start doing both again. So I'm, I'm tomorrow, I sh I'm going to buy a new bike. Oh, really? I was, uh, I was uh, doing professional stage races before I, you know, turned pro in bodybuilding. So oh, I didn't know that. Really? I, I want to get back on the bike. And obviously, I want to keep the most muscle I have. I mean, if right. I get applied to do the Arnold's next year, and Arnold's like at the gym all the time, so I can ask him. So I'm like... <laughs> Gives me gets me the invitation. I'm gonna go for it one more time. <laughs> but otherwise, like I'm not like I don't know if I could ever get to the Mr. Olympia. And even if like what's what am I required to do for that? You know. Right. So I was I was always like get the maximum out of the minimum. And I I get got pretty far, like further than most people would have thought. Sure. So. I would the, obviously give it a shot if I can do the Arnold's. Like that would be stupid. You're very you know? good at networking through that gold shim. I know he talks to Arnold. He talks to, to, yeah. to RFK Junior. You 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 fucked up with everyone at that gym. Yeah, Arnold's <laughs> super nice. I mean, he see, he seen me in 2020 the first time. I just yeah. won the uh, muscle contest, so I was in shape. Right. Um, and I worked out outside. I had my shirt off, and he came up to me and was like, "Oh, you look shredded. Let's do some shots." Show me the front double guys. Do you speak to him in German or what, what do you speak no, to him in what language? In English. Show yeah. me the front double bicep. And then then uh he knew I was Austrian. Oh, he knew, oh, he, he knew, okay. He knew. When, when he walked away, he said, Fantastic. 
so fantastic. And, yeah, yeah. And that was my first first time interacting. And then, That's awesome that he that he was able to come up to you and, and said, did did he ask you about like where you're from in Australia, your family, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're from the same state, even. Oh, like, really? That's interesting. Yeah, that is birth home too. I visited it last time. I was I was in Austria. That's awesome. Yeah, That's it's awesome. pretty cool. It's, it's a good cool. connection. Look, you can't you, you can't deny that that you guys have you know there's something there yeah. you know that you guys come from the similar place so. Uh, he has to. He has to acknowledge that. You know, there's not many people who are Australian, uh, Austrian, excuse me, Austrian bodybuilders. You know. Yeah, I train with his son also, like pretty much every week, a few times. Oh, really, it's, Joe? Yeah, yeah. We have the same kind of routine, anyways. Like the same cycle we go through. So. Right. He, I was like, like, I don't know how he recovers so good. Like that, he, he has some. Good Joe Bayana, which is his, his son, with the obviously with the maid, is that is, you think that he would ever compete in bodybuilding, or is he really just looking to be an actor? Oh, he's always kind of thinking about it. He's always like, ah. he loves posing. Like I said the other, day, if, if you know someone asked me who to hire for posing as a yeah. coach, I seriously would like tell him go to Joe. Let oh, know. he's that good. I didn't realize he was that good. Okay, mainly good at posing. He's like. You're, you're like Joe, go pose, and he like gets your routine right away, and he's so smooth, and he knows exactly how to hit the shots. Like right. he's better than 95 percent of the pros. That's crazy, but yeah. and he's never competed, right, at all. Never. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just see him going right to Hollywood. I, I, I have a feeling Arnold probably told him, "There's no money in body. <laughs> There's no money in bodybuilding." Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. But like he's always like, ah, oh, yeah, I would like to do it. But then it's like, ah, this guy wants me to lose some weight for this role, you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah. They they don't want you too big in Hollywood. It, it, he's he's not. If you look at him and as a bodybuilder, you would be like, ah, he's not that big. But yeah. in Hollywood, they're like, that's huge. They don't even want anyone bigger than what he is. You know, he they think he's probably too big at that. You know, his size. And you said they always say the the camera adds ten pounds. I can't. I kind of feel that's true. You know what? I did it. I did it. There was a, a talk show called the Jenny Jones Show. Jenny Jones was a talk show host. This was back in the nineties, and I did a. Show. I I was on one. I used to go do the talk show circuit. They would always get me on because I was big and crazy freaky, and I was three. I think at the time I was three fifteen, and I looked back and I watched this footage of myself. Even right after I did the show, I looked like <laughs> King Kong. I looked so so my. I, I'm so much bigger than everyone else. I look like like a creature from another planet. Like I'm like, holy Matt, the camera really does. It makes you look enormous. Like it's it's just you can't even understand like what it does to you. That's why when you see these actors and actresses, like I've seen these because I've done a lot of like talk shows, like I've been on the Conan O'Brien show. When you see these actresses backstage in the green room, they're so skinny, they're like emaciated. And on camera, they look normal. But in person, they're literally skin and bones, a lot of these, these actresses. And they don't look that way on camera. And that's because, like you said, the camera definitely adds weight to your body. Yeah, like, there's a lot of guys going to Gold's Gym all the time, like actors. You know, yeah. like one one day, there was the whole Expendable crew on the same day. That was oh, fun. that was been fun. Yeah, that was been great. Yeah, so, yeah that, that's a cool place. I, I interviewed Jason Statham once um, when he uh, – he was inducted into Bob Goldman's International Sports Hall of Fame at the Arnold Classic one year, and super nice guy. And and I had wanted to I wanted to interview him for forever because I wanted to ask him. You know, uh, you know, he, there's a line in the movie The Transporter that he he did. I don't know if you remember that movie he was in. And he says you could tell a lot about a man by the way he keeps his car. And I always like that line because it's true. If you, mm -hmm. you ever see a guy, a guy, if you ever see a person who has that, like a real sloppy, dirty, freaking car that they they usually don't take care of themselves either. But you can see like guys who keep their cars immaculate; they're in great shape, they're well groomed. And so I wanted to ask him about that. And so I, I had been in, I, we did the interview, and then my video guy lost the interview. He oh, didn't know God. where he put it, he, and I was so upset. I I got this interview with this guy. I was the only one he interviewed with, and I. And it was lost. And you know what? Three years later, I was going through some old cameras and I was downloading, making, looking at footage before I deleted it. And I found the interview and I actually put it up. But nice. three, three years later, I found the interview. So, all right. So, give me, give me, give me your ultimate stack. The ultimate 
longevity stack that you think people should take on a daily basis that would give you the most bang for your buck. It's not going to bankrupt you and you're going to get the most benefits out of it. Okay. So I would say, uh, obviously NMN. And, uh, so the av like when you look at studies, they always give you the average. That doesn't mean you are the average. You could be right. below or higher. So you might have to take more or even less But the average is like a 600 milligrams a day, which has the highest elevation of NAD. And after that, if you go like over that dose, it doesn't really add to the NAD in your blood. So therefore it's kind of a waste. Um, then I would take TMG beta in that helps with a lot of processes too. And it helps uh, multiply the effects of, um, uh, NMN. And then, uh, there's actually good stuff you can take for your skin, actually. So uh, uh, what? hyaluronic acid works very well. There's really like significant study outcomes, but it's often sold in topical creams, mm -hmm. but that's not absorb enough to get like really in the cell and do something. So okay. you actually get a hyaluronic acid powder. Um, and that is like, I would say 200 milligrams a day, like two capsules. Most of the things are in that's 100. enough 200 milligrams of stuff a day. That's it. Yeah. And then, um, I, I would obviously take collagen peptides, maybe 20 gram, 20 grams a day, uh, uh, like from bovine, like, and, um, what do you think those do? Oh, they help like with so many things like with, with skin, especially, but also with your, with your collagen production, with your joints, with like so many recovery processes so that's that's really good um i think there's such a long list of what it helps with and that's also so i have um uh there's a really good research organization called do not h.org and there's third party tested so that's where i get my stuff from and they also fund some research so they only like sell stuff that is shown to work um and i would obviously i would take nac too so nac okay. is how much so, um and i mean if you take nac it actually works really well with glycine there's a new study but they took like i think eight grams that's a lot for, but that helped tre uh, tremendously um but nac is always good and, and as i said it's hard to overdose too and it's also so great for neuroprotective uh, functions because like the only organ we can't really recover, so we have to keep it at it, like maintain it is our brain. And mm -hmm. what what good are you for when you're a hundred years old, but your brain's off? Like, oh yeah, hundred percent. I, I wouldn't have yeah. been Joe Biden, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I, I rather fall off the bike, but you know, my brain would work. Yep, Not me too. And um, there's, there's some other things that elevate sirtuin genes. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't say that's kind of super mandatory. So I would like quercetin is, is good, a uh, good thing to take. And then there's other things that, you know, if you're worried about your eyesight, for example, astaxanthin is really good. Um, it's a little individual. Um, you also sell a DNA test so people can find out. And I worked with a company too for like three years. And there you can see like how your eye health is declining or your memory, what's your memory age and your biological age too. So you can then also like, where would I need to work on or where do I decline faster than average? So I have to right. you know, do more in terms of prevention. And sure. then, and then those those uh, usually even those uh, um, like you get the results in an app and they would even tell they recommend you uh, oh, supplement. supplements. Yeah, that's a great that's a great thing. Yeah, I had when I had my DNA tested, I found out I don't methylate B12 and I don't methylate folate yeah. very well. So I take methyl folate and I take now my I make a product called V mineralized with vitamin you, minerals. They you have, have so called balance. mother disease. Do I have what? Do you have this MTHF thing? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't okay. know. Okay. Yeah. My 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 fiance has it. Oh. We call it I thought I had a I thought I had a connective tissue disease because 
I'm hyper flexible. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I got that aortic aneurysm when I was 50 and that's sometimes, you know, typified by a connective tissue disorder because, you know, your tissues are too pliable. Um, but I got tested for 190 connective tissue disorders and I had none, which was weird. I, I was convinced and <laughs> all the doctors were too. They were, they're like, there's no, you're de- Even the guy who actually, I went to the genetic guy who, who ordered the test for me. He's like, you're definitely, you have Ehlers-Danlos or you have Marfans or he was convinced that I had one of these. I mean, and I, and I was convinced because I can do crazy shit flexibility wise, you know, that uh, no normal person can do. And I'm the kind of guy that when I was, you know, I was, I was a runner, you know, in high school and college. And when I would, if I'd step on a rock, my ankle would, would turn. And you know how most people like will sprain their ankle and they can't walk on it for like four or six weeks. I can, my ankle would, my foot would actually touch my inside of my foot. It would turn so much and it would just, I walk it off in five minutes. That's how flexible my ankle joints were. And, um, but I didn't have anything. It was the weirdest thing. It came back completely negative. And so I, I still haven't figured out <laughs> figured out what's going on. I'm just like a, a mutant or something like that. I don't know. But you know, you can find out a lot. I think in the future, and you know what, I might have a connective tissue disorder that they haven't identified yet. Who knows? I think the future is definitely DNA testing so that yeah. you can find out where your weaknesses are and where your strengths are, and you'll know, hey, if I don't methylate B12. I got to take methyl B12, you know, methyl cobalamin, which I put in be mineralized. If I don't methylate folate, which is involved in the detoxification cycles of the body, then I got to take methyl fo- methylated folate, you know, supplements, folic acid supplements, essentially. And you can find these out now by getting DNA tested, which is great because we all have our own genetic weaknesses, which we never were able to identify prior to this. Now we can actually get the, I, I'm going to have my kids. Uh, tested their genes just so that I know what they're good at and what they're not good at. And so I can identify that rather than have to figure it out by trial and error. If you have that data ahead of time, you really can anticipate any problems before they happen. You know, If you, if you want to go uh, um, really optimize your longevity and you also yeah. worry with blood sugar control and all that, mm-hmm. and you might need to, you know, lower your blood pressure as well. I would probably also recommend telling uh, uh, telling Sartan um, because that even also elevates your AMPK. So that's like in multiple ways, it's actually really good for you. Right. Um, at least like, okay, I'm not recommending it, but I recommend you to ask your doctor if you recommend it. <laughs> no, I know. Well, you're not a doctor, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. If anyone listens to you, they're, they're yeah. listening to you out of, out of at entertainment. I use it. I've been on an ACE. Well, I was on an ACE inhibitor for like 25 years. I started it back in the early 2000s because I noticed when I hit was hitting, getting close to like my later 30s, I, my blood pressure was going up for whatever reason. I don't know what it might be. My the elasticity of my blood vessels got, I don't know what happened, but I noticed I was getting so I started, I wanted an ACE, ACE inhibitor. I'm taking, I took Ramapril and I took it all the way up to my cardiac surgery about four months ago. And after the surgery, when they fixed my aorta, I no longer need blood pressure medication anymore. I don't understand why. I don't know what's going on in my body. I cannot take it. If I take it, I, I go hypo, and I and I I feel like I'm going to pass out because my blood pressure gets too low. What oh, What happened in my body after that surgery? I don't know. I, I can't figure I can't figure it out. But I, I you know I was a big but. To get back to your original question, telomisartan is an angiotensin receptor blocker, whereas an ACE inhibitor kind of inhibits the enzyme that creates the, uh, the issue. They both kind of accomplish the same goal. And I think for bodybuilding purposes, those two drugs, those two categories of drugs are really all that bodybuilders should really consider. Because I know a lot of these doctors like to put bodybuilders or anyone on calcium channel blockers, and they like to use diuretics. And I think for bodybuilding purposes, th- those are not good drugs. Um, a lot of people get swelling in their legs from calcium channel blockers. Obviously, we use calcium to, for muscle contraction. That's probably not a great idea. And diuretics obviously mess up electrolytes. So, I, I, you know, unless you're in heart failure, you probably don't want to be on diazide or hydrochlorothiazide or Lasix on a regular basis to lower your blood pressure, that is. Um, what are and your you thoughts should, on that? And you should always first, like, really figure out the cause of whatever your symptoms are. And not right. just throw something on the sim- like on top to to reduce the symptoms. Like if you have high blood pressure because you're fat and lazy, just don't be fat and right. lazy. Right. And then you might never like same with like diabetes. Like if you have diabetes type two and it's self like 
to, like it's always self-induced. Right. Um, then, you know, you can also just fix your lifestyle because that's always the healthier choice and the better for longevity. You know, a lot of bodybuilders get type two diabetes because they, they take, they took growth hormone for 15 years and, you know, and their, and their pancreases are just not able to produce enough insulin. And some people just hit a certain age and the, the genetic time clock goes off and, and all their family genetics kick in. And all of a sudden, you know, they can't, they're waking up with high fasting blood sugars for no reason. And it's just that something happened. I don't know. We, we don't really know what causes this stuff, but there is this, what I call the diseases of aging, whether you, you can be the healthiest person in the world, but let's face it, bodybuilders eat six times a day. You know, the average person doesn't eat six times a day. When you eat six times a day, even if you eat low carb, your insulin requirements are a lot higher because, you know, you, your body's converting some of the amino acids invariably to, to glucose anyway. So sometimes the body just can't keep up with the demand that you're putting on it. Uh, and, and I'm a big believer in supplementing with long acting insulin if you need it to take the burden off the pancreas, because I think blood sugar control is very important to cognitive function later in life. Cause if you run high blood sugars for, even if they're marginally high for 15, 20 years, you're going to get, you're going to have dementia later. And they call that type three diabetes now, which is dementia di induced diabetes. Yeah. And you would also want to probably take something for your heart just for prevention. I just do that. And I honestly like that. Is, I recommend everyone to take like uh, a Kaneka uh, Ubiquinol, like two to 400 milligrams a day. If you're a bodybuilder, just go take it. I think a CoQ10 basically. It's a, it's a more yeah. potent form of uh, CoQ10 Ubiquinol. Yeah. I, I, from my research, it's the best form. And I'm yeah. convinced, but I haven't found any research on it. Maybe I just didn't look good enough, but I'm convinced that DHT is like making you age faster, high amount of DHT. And, um, and like growth hormone, if you like abuse it, so you take more than replace it. As I said, like the, if the IG, uh, IGF levels, you spike them so much, that's also going to you know, make you age faster. So not everything that makes you feel great is going to keep you young. Like if you replace it to a level where you're like at 25 years old, I can only, you know, that's obviously healthier than being low on everything. Yeah. But like, as I said, like maybe you don't even have to replace it. Maybe your lifestyle is just uh, uh, the way that, you know, it's lifestyle induced low levels. Like if you right. just sleep and drink, I mean, alcohol is the worst thing ever. Like even a glass of wine, it was it will cut your REM sleep in half, a glass of wine that's supposedly uh, uh, healthy. Like mm -hmm. no, no amount of alcohol is healthy whatsoever. Yeah. You know what though? I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to make a statement. I <laughs> think that uh, I, since I've obviously had my heart surgery, I really haven't really had too much alcohol, but I, I like sometimes like a half a glass of red wine at night, but I'll say this. I think that anything in, done in excess, and excess is no good. And I think that in moderation, you can get away with certain things. Now, if you're dieting to lose body fat and you're drinking a glass of red wine every night and you're not losing any weight, then you're obviously sabotaging your weight loss. I don't necessarily, I know they say even one glass of red wine is not good for you. It's going to kill brain cells. I think that living kills brain cells too. So once again, don't get so caught up with that you can't enjoy your life. Just don't do things in excess. Because one glass of wine can turn into five glasses of wine very easily every single night because people start using it as a crutch. So, you know, if you go to a restaurant on a weekend and you want to have a glass of red wine, you don't have to worry that, you, you know, you're going to you're going to die from that or anything like that. No, but, no. But no. you're right. You know, you don't need we don't want to put any kind of toxic load on the body ever, because when you're doing that, it just makes the, the body has to work a lot harder to get rid of all these toxins, including alcohol to a certain degree. So. You know, you got to think about that. Now, give me, I think, I mean, give me your top five, top five stuff that you use. And I'm going to give you my top five things that I use for, for longevity purposes. Just list them off. You don't have to explain what they are because you already kind of explained what they are. I, for Okay. I would say, oh, that's top five. Oh my God. Give us 10. I don't care. What do you use on a rail, on a regular okay. basis? What do you take? So I would say, NMN and NMN. Uh, NAC, NAC, uh, ubiquinol, and okay. fish oil. 
Okay. How much fish oil do you take? Uh, like, I think 2,000 EPA a day. Okay. okay. Do you um, take just the EPA or do you take a, a look at No, fish I oil? take both, but so that it comes out at, and it's higher, more EPA than DHA. Yeah. Um, so let's say like about three grams combined or so. Okay. That's right. Mm, you could take a little more even. Dep yeah. like, on your, depends on your body weight. Maybe I should take even a little more. Like, because the recommendations are always like for everyone. And if you're like a 130 yeah, but, a woman, right. you know, obviously. But if you eat fish and if you eat omega 3 eggs in your diet, you know, you're probably getting some omega 3 from that as well. That should be enough. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what else? Um, did I say ubiquinol? Yes. Mm -hmm. you take, so you don't take resveratrol or anything like that? No. I mean, I take it because it's in some stuff that I have anyways. Oh, okay. right. But I'm not convinced that it's really doing that much. Okay. Like, the research just doesn't really show it in humans. Um, maybe, like, there's going to be stuff where it's like, oh, yeah, well, we got it. Like, I'm all like I'm open to be convinced. I'm not saying right, I know. Right. I don't know more. I don't know more than it that, than the data that's out there. I right. can only. I'm not the researcher that that you know. I have a lab back there, and I know more than has yeah. been published. Um, <laughs> yeah. What else? NAC is it? I think those should be. You don't need twenty five different things. As a matter of fact. It, it, it's intimidating to most people if you give them too many things to take and yeah. they won't do it. So you gave us the most potent things that you believe no, yeah. that you know, right? I could list like hyaluronic acid and collagen, but I don't think they're going to make me live longer, really. They're yeah. just more also for like the skin Cosmetic. health difference. Right. So like you said, the top five. So I have to nail it down to the best ones. So that would be, I yeah. think. So what, what did I forget in your opinion? I don't know. I, I, I use uh, glutathione almost every day. I use the NAD plus I, and I use the injectable forms I get from TitanMedicalCenter.com. And uh, I, I really, I, that's really the, the, the one, the two things I kind of use on a regular basis from them. And I take, I'm trying to think what else I, I do take ubiquinol, uh, 200 milligrams every day, which is you know, my CoQ10 for my heart and heart health. Obviously, I'm, I'm very big on essential fats. I have a product called Omega Lies, which is balanced yeah. omega 3s and 6s. I do take extra EPA as well, pure EPA from Omega Via uh, for coronary artery health. They found there's yeah. some research yeah. to show that 2,000 milligrams a day of EPA, pure EPA oil will clear out any plaque in, in your arteries. And uh, so that's, that's good for that. Uh, what else do I take uh, that would be considered anti-aging? Uh, Oh, you could do red light therapy too. That's pretty pretty cheap to get. What is it called? Fake, but yeah. What is it called? I didn't hear what you said. What'd you say? There's pretty good and cheap red light devices out there you can you can use. So that's what you could do as well. And then I mean, be regimented in your behavioral like, you know, a uh, uh, regimen. Like if you go to bed, don't be like in front of a bright screen all night. You know, right. Right. Be down have your your routine there try to go to bed the same time sure all that i use oh I, I use uh i use melatonin before bed i use i also take i don't know if you take this this is really good too ppq you know what that is no ppq uh is a supplement nutritional supplement that will regenerate mitochondria that sounds good so, yeah there's a they've life extension makes a really good ppq product what does and, it what? What does it stand for? Do you know? It's like pyridoxal, pyro. I, I don't remember what the exact uh, you know, quinolone, quinolone, or something like that. I, I I had it in my head. I'm usually pretty good with those things. I, I just it's, it's not sticking to my brain right now. But it has been shown to regenerate mitochondria. We didn't really talk about this. We kind of you brushed over it a little bit. But a lot of what they think causes aging is the breakdown of the mitochondria, which are the energy producing organelles inside of all our cells. So all our cells have these little mitochondria, they oxidize fats in there and they, they're basically like the engine of the cell. And if the engine breaks down of your cells, obviously your cells are not going to perform as well. And so the, a lot of the theories of aging has to do with the fact that the mitochondria break down. Supposedly PPQ helps regenerate. I know NAD does that as well, but PPQ actually makes you produce new 
uh, mitochondria, supposedly, according to the yeah. research. Also, also like high endurance training does. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I believe that too. When I when I was a runner, here, here's another theory of why I have no body fat on my body. You know, I was a, a runner for high school, end of high school, or and throughout college. Uh, I was running probably an average of you know sixty to seventy miles a week, probably more than that at some points. Ooh. At least ten miles a day at some points. Yeah. Never missing a day, you know, every single day. And I think that, you know, when you subject your body to that kind of exercise, the muscle cells, you know, in runners, muscles don't get bigger. They become more oxygen efficient. They become better fat metabolizers. And I think what happened is my body, I think, and this is, there's some research to prove this, that your body will actually start producing more, not only nuclei, but more mitochondria in the cells to try to keep up with the energy requirements of the cell. So what's happening is you look the same as a runner. You might even look skinnier, you know, the more you run, but you're producing more nuclei and you're producing more mitochondria. Now stop it's running and, and switch to bodybuilding like I did, which most people don't do. I know Roman Fritz was kind of in a similar situation as me. Now you have so many more nuclei which is basically means you have so many more muscle cells that you didn't have before because all these stem cells redifferentiated themselves into mature muscle fibers. They were just small because you weren't, you weren't hypertrophy training. Now I'm hypertrophy training and I have more mitochondria than the average person, or at least than I had prior. And I have a lot more nuclei. So it makes sense that why my legs got so big and why my metabolism was so gunned up because it was like I supercharged my body from the running, and then I and then I switched and, and did something else. But I had old. I had. I, it's like I had better. It's like I had better equipment now to to to, to, to bodybuild. If I would have just bodybuilded it right out of high school and never did the running, I don't think I would have had the metabolism I had, and I don't think I would have had the ability to put on as much muscle in my at least in my legs as I did. You know. Well, I I struggle putting on muscle in my legs, and I yeah. was a for, so I I maybe switch too many fibers and can't switch them back. Uh, I mean, you could you could argue both ways. I I think that you have one or the other type. I don't know if they actually switched so much. So I, I you know, genetically, you I always have... wondered. I said, am I was I really meant to be an endurance athlete, or did I make myself an endurance athlete? Maybe I was really meant to be like a sprinter because I had when I bodybuilt, I had huge legs. You know, and they when, grew so when easily. I studied, when I studied in university and I studied sports science, yeah, uh, the current the state back then was you can switch fast to slow so you can make yourself an endurance athlete but right. you can't the other way that was the state back then i don't know like if they did more research and now they right. found you can but that well, was the, so that right. all was like kind of what i feared happened to me like I, i'm gonna <laughs> train no matter what and i like i keep growing my legs with like super yeah. slow and i yeah. like to train even legs with me oftentimes but even yeah. like it's probably you know, it's probably very genetic you know what my daughter who's six years old five years old has monster quads and glutes and and i mean it probably <laughs> takes after my wife but i mean she's got good leg genetics you could just see she's powerful yeah. you know and 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 she doesn't do any you know she's she's not like training them she's just built like you know like that and my son kind of has my like leg genetics like super ripped lean you know, but who knows if he ever, you know, if he ever squatted, I bet you they would grow pretty well. So I, I think, I think it's a lot of genetics too oh, yeah. involved in that, you know, no one in my family ever weight trained. you like, so who, who knows what my family would have been capable of genetically speaking. I was the first person who ever really was an athlete in, in the history of my family. I don't know why they're, they're all just very, very lazy. <laughs> they, were, they were good athletes in, in high school, but they never went beyond that, you know? And so, uh, I was the first person to really go to that next level. And um, so, you know, I didn't even know what my genetics I was dealing with was because, you know, I have like, it's great when you see these bodybuilders today, like Sergio Oliva Jr., whose father was a world-class bodybuilder. He kind of knew what his genetics were because he knew what his father had, you know? And so, but most people don't know because most people's parents aren't, you know, professional bodybuilders, you know? You can actually pass on genes by the way you behave. Like, because, like, I think that's pretty like hasn't changed in the involvement of humans. Yeah. yeah. So like if your body knows hard work, it's going to pass on genes to that. your yeah. like kids 
so that they know that they prepare to be able to work hard as well. So wow. that, that's actually like scientific fact. So you can influence your, your, the DNA you're giving uh, your past. So like if your dad would have trained, you could have been even better. Yeah, no, I know. And my so father was an athlete and, 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 <laughs> you know, he played football and all that stuff, but Oh, yeah, it, it, it's interesting to see what my generation of my children, because my wife obviously was an elite level gymnast, and then she was a professional bodybuilder too. So it will be interesting to see what our kids are capable of. You know, just even if they don't become bodybuilders, just just athletically speaking, because you would think that they would have an advantage for from all the hard work that both of us put in. Yeah. You know, prior to having them, uh, will that be transmitted? Uh, we'll find out in the next generation. It's still my kids are still pretty young, so it's kind of hard to see it, but. Um, they definitely have sports inclinations and, and, and but you know, kids are lazy. My son is late, like, but I was lazy too when I was younger, you know, <laughs> it, came, if it comes too easy. You know, sometimes you don't really put a full output, you know, my I got unlazy I later in life. You know, I got unlazy when I got into bodybuilding. So my wife has a really good back. So we'll see <laughs> yeah. Yeah. my fiance, but it's going to be soon. You, you, well, congratulations. You have the good uh, Austrian <laughs> genetics, so you can't go wrong with that. So, <laughs> yeah, my grandpa was a bike rider, and I have oh, very right? thighs, you know, so it's also harder to put on muscle on very long thighs. Like, there's guys that compete against me, they have half the, the thigh length. I mean, come right. on, <laughs> you know, what's you know, what's interesting is you said you, you cycle, right? And I am um, oh. a culture, I was a long distance runner in college and in, in high school. And, you know, then I became a bodybuilder, obviously. And, and you know, probably in 2000 and maybe 14, my wife convinced me to buy a bike. Mm. She's like, we should go bike. We should start bike riding. I said, all right. Because mm. in where I lived in Long Island, there was a bike path that goes to the beach, Jones Beach bike path, very famous bike path. All, the, all these big cyclists are on there all the time. And I've told the story before, but um, so I started, I bought the, the the hybrid bike first, you know, it was a nice Trek hybrid bike. And after riding it for about four or five weeks and I got good on it, I'm like, yeah, you know, I want to see, I'd like to see one of those road bikes and see how they feel, which is a big mistake. Cause you know what happens? You go into the store and I'm like, you, you try like a, a $2,000 bike, you know, carbon fiber. I'm like, wow, this thing is unbelievable. It's better than the bike I have. I think I want to buy this. And then I'm like, you know what? I want to see what the, the, the number one bike you sell feels like. <laughs> I want to see what it feels like. I, I want to know what the difference is. Big mistake. You can't do that. But if you get on that bike and it was a Trek, they had one bike. It was like, like $12,000, this bike. It weighed like 11 pounds or 12 pounds the whole bike. It was like you could pick it up with your finger. <laughs> and I got on this thing and I and literally I felt like I had a second girlfriend. This thing was like – it was like made for me. It was like, it was like I was – riding on air it was like it was unbelievable the feeling on this bike and i had to buy the bike and and i really wanted it but i didn't want i wasn't going to spend twelve thousand. he's like you know what <laughs> trek makes us but the bike guy told me he said the trek makes us buy one of these bikes every year when they come out with their new models we don't sell these expensive bikes in this store i'll tell you what if you really want it i'll give it to you at cost the cost was like eight grand that's what they their cost was on it they were selling it for 12 and mm -hmm. i and i bought the bike <laughs> this is before this is before I had kids, so I, I had expendable income, and so I bought the bike, and I, I I love this bike. I still have the bike. I just don't ride anymore. You know, I clipped in. I did the whole. I had to go 100 percent because I'm all. And so I'm riding this bike on the bike path with these guys that have been biking for 20 years. You know, and they're like, you know, so you know, you start talking and chatting with these guys because they everyone it's the same guys every time the day at you know 10 o'clock in the morning. It's the same people biking every day. And they're like, you know, we've never seen you here before. Who, you know, how, where, would you move here from another state? I said, no, I've lived here my whole life. They're like, well, how long you've been biking? You know, where, where, where have you been biking? I said, I, I just started biking six weeks ago. They're like, they're like, do you know how fast you're going and how you're <laughs> keeping up? You know, we've been doing this 20 years. No one can keep up with us. I said, well, I have this bike. The bike is, is you know, I, I'm blaming it on the bike. I'm like, the bike is amazing. I, I, it's like, I, it's like, I'm not even, I, I don't even feel like I'm, I'm working. They're like, it, it ain't the bike. We all have the same bike you do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> they said, you're, you, because what happens is, and the, 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 when you have achieved a certain level, it's like, it's, like, it's like bodybuilding. Once you've achieved a certain level of muscularity, you can get back to that muscularity, muscle memory. Yeah. Same thing with endurance. You know, from all the years of running, 
it's like something snapped in my brain. And I, and all of a sudden I was after, you know, four to six weeks of training, I was back to where I was when I was a runner again. And obviously I didn't have to run where I was pounding the ground. I'm pedaling a bike and all my endurance came back. And that's when all, that's when all my problems started <laughs> because I was, I was, I was riding too fast. I was like, I, what was I going to prove it at 45 years old, you know, uh, on a bike, you know, and so I, I was, I got extreme with the whole thing. I got it completely sucked into it, you know, and you know, the whole, that whole runner's high thing you get with the bike riding. And, um, so I was riding one day and I, I noticed on my heart rate monitor that my, my heart rate went from 150, which is what I was riding at to 250. What? And I said, yeah, I said, that ain't good. <laughs> That's not good. No. So I slowed down and I'm coasting. I'm like, uh oh. oh. I, and I didn't feel any different. And I, I, I knew that I knew the heart rate monitor was accurate. And I said, I'm, I think I'm in big trouble here. This is not good. So luckily it, it came down and it went back to normal. And so I, I told my wife about it. She's like, ah, it's probably the, the heart rate monitor. And it happened again a few more times. I told my cardiologist, he says, impossible. And yeah. to make a long story short, it turns out I, I, at, when I exercise at very, very high levels, I throw these weird tachycardias, which I found out. And that scared the crap out of me. And I, and I realized, and the doctor told me, and he said, you know, why are you riding so fast? Why do you have to push your body to that? To the, why can't you, you pedal at 120 beats a minute? And I said to, him, I said to myself, you know what? He's right. What, what am I doing? I'm not, I'm not competing for the Tour de France here. But as bodybuilders, we have this mentality that if we don't give 100% to what we're doing, we're really not doing anything. Yeah. And I'm the saying. truth is that good health is not necessarily pushing as hard as you can no it's about finding that middle ground where you're getting the benefit from the cardiovascular activity but you're not actually jeopardizing or putting your your, your body in such a stressful state that it's actually detrimental to your health and i think that's a hard thing for as a bodybuilder to find that middle ground don't you agree oh absolutely yeah and i mean that's what we like talked about all the time like yeah. you have to cycle things like you can't push it all the time. And if you would go hard every day, your heart, you would see like your heart rate, like all of a sudden it wouldn't go up anymore. And when you realize your heart rate is not going up fast and coming down fast as it uses to, then you know, like you should take a break now. Yeah. Like yeah. You do, that, that doesn't mean you're unhealthy right away or like, that's just me. Okay. You're a little overtrained, you know, give it a rest. I was at such a point when I was cycling that if I would go to a bodybuilding show, like I remember I went to this Oklahoma show we were covering, we were doing a live stream from that show and uh, they were doing a weigh-in in, in, in this uh, gym. And in the, in the corner of the, of the aerobics room of the gym where they were weighing people and there was a spin bike. And I was like in withdrawal because I hadn't biked that day because we were on an airplane. And I went over to the spin bike and I got on there and I started pedaling and I spun and I was on the thing for like an hour. My, my wife said, what the hell are you doing over there? I said, I said, ah, I did a little workout <laughs> because I was so addicted to the whole aerobic aerobics is very, very, very addicting, you know, and it's hard to, to manage. It's like, you want to do it every day because you get a, you get almost like an endorphin high from doing, you know, cardiovascular exercise. I don't know if you experience the same thing, yeah. but it's not that you're addicted to the, the behavior. It's like, I don't really miss going to the gym it's the it's the high I get from the actual weight training session, and uh, and it's hard to explain that to an average person. But anyone who bodybuilds knows what I'm talking about. It's it, it's it's hard to take a day off from the gym. It really is. I understand the the mentality. You know, I just told my fiance just like not even like it's like I don't know what was it like I think it was this morning. I'm like I don't know if I can go to Dallas with you for a week. I can't ride my bike there. <laughs> But, you know, they did a study and they found that um, older people who weight train three days a week got more benefits out of it than those who, who, who weight train five or six days a week. Interesting. And, and you would say to yourself, why is that? And they found the same thing with endurance exercise. Runners too, older runners, they got more endurance benefits and, and more health benefits out of running like four or five days a week than running seven days a week. And it's because I think it's because when you get older, you don't handle inflammation as well. And having excessive chronic inflammation because you're always exercising is not good for the body. 
and your body can't recover well. So you actually do, you need less stimulation when you get older to get the same benefits that when you were younger, you might've needed more stimulation for. And so I think bodybuilders have noticed is I've had a lot of guys tell me, you know, I could train three days a week now and maintain my muscle and my body. And I feel good, and, 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 and there's no reason for me to go five days a week anymore. And, and I've noticed that, too. Sometimes if I go, like, if I don't hit the – if I miss the gym because I have appointments or whatever, um, I don't look any different. I actually look better sometimes, I, you know. So it's something to consider, you know. As you're getting a little older, you might want to take more days off, you know, from your exercise. It doesn't mean you shouldn't exercise. It just means you don't need to exercise every single day. I will definitely exercise every single day now that I – both. But – I will. You're only 31. You could you could handle it. Don't worry. But about I will it. reduce my. I will have to reduce my like volume in the gym. Like yeah. I, no way I can do. But to keep my muscle, I, obviously I'm not going to take stuff. Yeah. But I don't think it's like keeping muscle is so much easier than like building it. So. Oh, building it's much harder. Much harder. Yeah. I don't worry. And I mean, honestly, like I'm not. I didn't get into the sport because of a complex, which most of the people do. You know, I, I like right before that, I try to be as skinny as I can to climb up the mountains faster. Like I wasn't feeling like I'm a loser. I'm not muscular. Right. Like, right. damn, that's a cool sport. I like to look buff. I always like muscle. Let's do it. You know, <laughs> but yeah. Have you heard of um, uh, L ergothionine? Ergothionine? No. Look it up. I, I've been taking it from Life Extension. It's like an amino acid. It's... um. Yeah, I'm trying to find it so I can pull it up for these guys. For these guys, but uh, it, it supposedly is, is uh, good for longevity too. There was some studies, and I, I read in Life Extension magazine. I get a lot of my uh, life, a lot of my longevity stuff from Life Extension. I don't know if have you ever gone to Life Extension's website? Yeah, they're they're pretty good company. I, I I you know, there's a bunch of companies where you don't know if there actually is anything in there, and they're yeah. pretty. So, yeah, that's yeah, like. Well. Have to like everyone who's like trying to get things of Amazon, you know, life extension might be more expensive, but you can be pretty sure that you actually get what's on the label. Yeah, this is this uh, L ergothionine. Um, it's pretty interesting. I did I did a video on it a couple of years ago. Um, all the different benefits of it, but uh, read up on it. It's it's, it's a pretty it says, interesting thing. Yeah, it says joint pain, liver damage. Else it does I'm... every it does everything. Yeah, it's one of those do everything things. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But so, also anyway. an inflammatory, you know, that's the Yeah. The it's for, it's isolated I think from mushroom extracts. There's a lot of there's a lot of interesting stuff in mushrooms from you know turkey tail mushrooms are supposed to be good for mental cognition and I mean we could probably talk there's there's, there's a lot of things that I would I that I don't take on a regular basis but I do rotate in and out of my uh my my supplement protocol every so often i might do a month of this thing or a month of that but, thing but very wise on a regular basis I, I kind of you know i do the nad i do the um uh, the uh, the glutathione and of course i do my v mineralize um which is my vitamins minerals antioxidants and, and fruit and vegetable extracts that's in one product i do my essential fatty acids which is in my omega lyse formula and, and I'm a big, big advocate, you know, of fiber. So fiber lies is our number one selling product at Species Nutrition. And I'm a yeah. big, big believer in, in fiber. I think not enough people take enough fiber in their diet, soluble fiber, uh, you know, and that doesn't, you know, we could do a whole show on fiber. But uh, yeah. I think that a lot of bodybuilders, especially if you're eating five, six times a day, if you don't take a fiber supplement, you're, 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 you're doing a disservice to your body, really. You can easily take a before bed. You know? I take one dose before bed. I take a dose in the middle of the day. Matter of fact, if you send me your address when we hang up, I'll send you. I'm going to send you some some of my products so you can try them because I know you're going to love them. Uh, oh yeah, sure. yeah. I'm, so you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, just because I, I I know what you're into now, and so I I think that you'll appreciate you know the the quality of the supplements we sell because a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of you know you can't just take a vitamin mix that has everything in it. But if it's not in the right dosages and it's not in the right absorbent, like a lot of people take minerals, but they don't take chelated minerals, you know, and so they're they're probably not even absorbing most of the minerals. Yeah. And a lot of people take vitamin, you know, different vitamins, but they're not even taking the right amount of these vitamins. Um, my the, the, my my biggest pet peeve is the is the ultimate one a day multivitamin that they sell like in the in the grocery store. 
like Centrum or one of those things where people think they're going to get one, they're going to take one pill a day and it's going to give them everything they possibly need in there. You know, that, that was a big scandal, like with, I think, Walgreens vitamins, there was nothing in there. And then, <laughs> I think some, we even, call it pixie dust, pixie dust. They just sprinkle it in there, you know. Yeah, I heard there were some even contained heavy metals, like they were even bad oh for you. God. Wow. And you paid for that crap. So, like, really, like, honestly, like, there's no, there's no vitamin that you could take that's one pill a day. If, it, it, matter of fact, if you see a bottle that says one a day or even two a day, just don't even waste your money on it. But you might as well take nothing because just because it says 100% of the da recommended daily allowance, that's based on, a, on an old lady laying in a hospital bed, what she needs just so she doesn't get scurvy from being vitamin C deficient. Okay, that hasn't been the case of scurvy since the Mayflower came over here. So. It, it, there's no real world, you know, uh, reality to any of these 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 products. They're selling them to you, and the, the, what's even worse than those one a days is the gummy vitamins. Oh my god! <laughs> it's just you're eating candy. It's candy with a sprinkle of vitamins in it. I mean, I, literally. I mean, my kids eat it, but uh, because it's, you can't get them to swallow a pill at, at, at three years old. But I see adults eating gummy vitamins. I'm like, what, what's wrong with you? So, <laughs> <laughs> you really think that you're getting anything out of these these vitamins? It's all sugar. It's just a sugar gummy bear, you know. But people do it. It's because it's 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 very pal. Look, who doesn't want to eat a good tasting candy and thinking you get your vitamins in there every day? I mean, it's like uh, it's a no brainer. It's this great sales pitch. But you know, people are looking for the magic pill. You're in you're, you're in the industry. You know it. <laughs> I believe me. It, it, it's. It, the edu I'm, I'm constantly fighting the education battle, just trying to educate people as to what the right thing to do is. And, um, you know, if you if you affect one person every video you do, then you eventually you, you, you affect a lot of people. But it just takes a long period of time to do that. So, yeah, like I've been watching your channel since like, I don't know, like forever when I started mm -hmm. watching it. Probably, I don't know when, when you started, but it probably was 2010 or so that I oh, watched wow, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a long time. We started at RX Muscle in 09. I was with I was with Muscle Development from 06 to 09. So I've been doing this, you know, 26 years now, just 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 online. You know, I was before that I was answering questions in forums, you know, on, on, on and, and then there was a couple like when the internet first started, there were some websites, like one was called mesomorphosis.com. I used to do a QA column on there. Uh, they used to pay me every month to do a Q&A, like answer questions about performance-enhancing drugs, vitamins, supplements, diet. And I did that for years on there. You know, they, they, those are, they're probably still up someplace, you know. And uh, you know, that, I was always trying to provide information. And I've learned a lot over the years, and my information has grown in, in, in size. But there's a lot of misinformation out there. And that's the one thing I don't like about the Internet. There, there's... People think they try to educate themselves watching TikTok, and uh, unfortunately, that's not probably the best source of information. There is some good information on there, but there's unfortunately, you know, it, it's it's being spoon fed with the uh, with a spoonful of sugar, as they like to, as they say, you know. Do you do you watch Andrew Huberman sometimes? I haven't I haven't really watched this stuff now. You know, to be honest, I don't I, I I get so burnt out. I, I very rarely do I watch like podcasts or other channels. It's really good. Yeah, it's if it's if it's recommended to me like by someone like you, I'll watch it because I uh, I do like to I I do believe that we're you never stop learning, you know. And the minute you think you've stopped, you've you've learned everything there is to learn. You you, you might as well just you know retire at that point because uh, there's always new knowledge coming out on a regular basis. That's why I read you know I read I just still read. Uh, look, I got my new issue right here. The only magazine I read, Life Extension, because it comes for free, because I belong to Life <laughs> Extension Society. But they, they have good information here. And you can get it on their website, too. But I just, you know, I, I in between interviews, I'll sit here and I'll just read through the pages and I'll look at the – because they, they summarize the latest studies based on, you know, longevity, fat loss, health, nice. well-being. And they have different topics every month. Like this one uh, is about cardiovascular health. Uh, sometimes they have, like, anti-cancer stuff, how to beat cancer – um, how to burn fat, you know, they always have different topics every month. So if, if you're looking out there for a source of information that you can actually believe that's backed by, you know, studies, 
you know, life extension does a really good job with that. Now, granted, there are some studies that suggest one thing or another, but they're really, they're, they're really for more holistic, naturalistic, you know, healing. And so I, I, I like, I like the information here. Some of the stuff is not necessarily relevant for bodybuilders, but a lot of it is. And, uh, you can learn a lot on this, and that's that's how I try to expand my uh, my knowledge base. But uh, I want to is thank that, you. Get yeah, get finished. Is that for free for uh, customers or f just for? Everybody? Yeah, you can, if you go to their website, you join their VIP club or whatever it is. It used to be you had to pay a few bucks a year, but now I think it's free. And the good thing is, um, even if there is a fee, I don't know if they're still charging. They used to charge a fee, but they basically give you that credit for whatever you paid towards the supplements. So if you want to buy their supplements you get like 50 bucks of credit or something like that. And so it, it comes out to be free essentially. But then every month they send you this magazine, which is kind of cool, you know? So for me, it's worth it because it, it takes the work out of me having to scour the internet, finding the latest studies. They kind of put the relevant stuff right in here and it just makes it easier to find, I think. Yeah, that's so. cool. All right, well, Leo, I want to thank you for joining us. I can't believe we did two, an hour and a half with this show, but I, we could probably could do another hour and a half uh, because this is a big subject. Yeah. about how to live a healthy life, a long life, and uh, how to kind of weed through all the products on the market. Maybe we'll do another uh, deep dive again and talk about some of the newer products on the market that supposedly address cognition, because I think that's a big thing. I think a lot of people, I know I worry about it. I don't want to lose my mind when I hit 80 years old, you know? Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff like neuroprotective stuff. Yeah, we can go into that. I think that'd be a good topic. For now, though, we're going to wrap it up. I'm Dave Palumbo with Leo Meyerhofer. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.